Hello and welcome to Cricketry here on the Papare.com. We're just outside the Manuka Oval in Canberra, where day one of a historic test match has just ended. And I'm afraid a day that started so promisingly for Sri Lanka never ended that way. Sri Lanka losing the toss, being asked to bowl first, couldn't have started off any better. 28 for 3, Sri Lankans should be laughing and I thought they would be flying with those first three wickets. But then what happened afterwards is most forgettable. And I thought it's, it's, it's one of the most forgettable days as far as Sri Lanka is concerned. And I also thought that the outfield, outfielding, bowling and everything with the game, everything in the day's play wasn't really great. Now if we start off things, I thought it looked a bowling day for me because it was overcast and it, mind you, remained that way. And when I took a look at the pitch, it looked green. And I didn't think that the Sri Lankans would be wanting to bat on this surface with these conditions against a very strong Australian bowling attack. And mind you, that bowling attack has so many test wickets and lots of experience. On the other side of the coin is that Sri Lanka lost Suranga Lakmal earlier on. Now, how much would Sri Lanka would have loved to have had Suranga Lakmal? With his five wickets at Brisbane, this would have been a surface he would have enjoyed. But unfortunately, not to be, Sri Lanka fielded a very inexperienced bowling lineup. Kasun Rajita had been more or less on the bench for a long time. Vishwa Fernando, no match practice at all. And then you have Chamika Kanuratna, who just arrived almost 48 hours ago, just been brought in, thrusted in to play in the side. But with all that, I thought the Sri Lankan start was excellent. Chamika Kanuratna getting a wicket of the first in his first over, becoming only the 10th Sri Lankan bowler in the history to get a wicket in his first over in Test cricket. So the start was perfect. Labushain was dismissed, one of the batsmen who got runs in Brisbane, and Sri Lankans were looking up. But I always felt that the 30 to 40 minutes period immediately after the third wicket was going to be critical. The little phase between that time and lunch was going to be critical because test matches are generally won by winning little faces, little battles. Now that's where I thought Sri Lanka lost it. Just allowed that third wicket pair to carry on. They went to lunch at three for 102. And I also felt that Dananjay De Silva's catch was vital. Burns looking to run Dilruan Pereira down to third man. Sharp catch, no doubt. Catches are never easy, but in test cricket, you expect catches to be taken. And then, what really happened, as far as Sri Lanka was concerned, is that the pitch flattened out. So there was no movement, there was no seam movement at all, nothing for the spinners. So in a situation like that, what do you do? You've got to have your fielders playing their A game. You can't afford to drop catches, you can't afford to miss field. And that's precisely what Sri Lanka did. They dropped too many catches. Dananjay De Silva dropped a catch of his own bowling, then Dilruan Pereira at Gali dropped a, again, I thought catchable one just above his head. We're talking about test cricket, we're talking about international cricketers, we're not talking about club cricketers, so we know that such catchers should be taken. And then, as soon as Patterson came in, Lahiru Tirimana just dropping a fairly simple catch at forward short leg. Add to that, you should take a look at the length the Sri Lankan bowlers bowled. They were being scored off on either side of the pitch, square on the offside, which tells us a story that they were bowling too short. The pitch wasn't quick. The Sri Lankan bowlers weren't really quick. They were bowling at around 130 to 135. So that's not express pace. So you need to be tight. Yes, the pitch was good. So what do you do? in circumstances like that. You try and dry out runs. I'm sure the Sri Lankans had great plans, but the execution, that was the question. So 380 for four, well, virtually Sri Lanka, I get the feeling, has let slip this game. From 28 for three, they've seen this game slip away, and the best they could hope for with a newish ball, the new ball only seven overs old, that they would be able to mount a fight and keep Australia down to something Oh, I can't say manageable because they're beyond manageable now. If they can keep them under, say, 500 if you can, and then still try and utilize good conditions. Now, one thing is, will the sun come out? Now, if the sun comes out, the chances are that there are some dry patches on the surface that we might see some turn. Well, that's something we'll have to find out as the game progresses. But today, it was overcast, perfect. Sadly, it was not Sri Lanka's day. So that's the story. 380 for four, not a great day at the Manuka Oval in this historic test match. I kind of hope that tomorrow might be better. This is Roshan Abe Singer reporting for Cricketry on the Papare.com. <laughs>